Okay, hello and welcome back. Today we're going to have a look at a Paddock's product, or a, a U-Pole product, which is the Raptor Protection Kit. Okay, this is actually a, uh, um, a truck buck liner. Okay, and basically this is a 2K paint, which means it needs a hardener. Now the 4 litre kit is about 70 quid, which is quite uh, cheap to be honest with you this kit is a tintable that I've got you can see here I've got a, a tint mix which I've bought from a uh, paint supplier so basically this tint will be about 10% per volume of the paint right so you can tint this um, tintable uh, Raptor in any color that you like we're basically going for a fairly coarse surface finish on this. You can get a, uh, a fine finish with a low pressure, high volume gun, but we're going to be using a, uh, well, we call it a, a Schultz applicator, but this is also a uh, U-Pole uh, applicator for the Raptor, which basically it really hosses out. I've also put a modification on here. If you can see this, this is just a uh, stabilizer to make sure I have the right pressure at the end of the gun okay so we're on 40 psi with this piece of equipment pressure spraying pressures are between 40 and 60 psi and it's down to personal preference how you have the pressure so i'm using a test piece here to see how it's going to come out basically it pushes it out like this and it is a fairly textured okay there's a fair bit of material comes out of the gun fairly quickly like I said you can use a high volume low pressure gun with about two millimeter nozzle on it and that's thanks to uh, one of our friends on Facebook that's recommended this for uh, finer textures with any painting equipment, obviously, once you've finished with it, you need to make sure it's clean, ready for the next time you use it. And we use a standard thinners to clean it out with. Okay. Right, so here is the type of texture that we have on the toolbox that we're painting. Now, we're going to paint this and then put it into service to see how durable this paint actually is. Right, so for keying up... You want P60, P80 grit. Now I'm using an orbital sander with this. Doesn't matter, basically it's just for um, quickness. Now feathering out and flattening the paintwork. Preparation, always the best to make sure that you have a key on all the paintwork. Even if you go down to bare metal, you need a key. Right, so just to protect yourself, we have an irritation dust mask, okay. And this is my favourite. This is much better for filtering out dust in the air. And uh, basically I need this because of my age. My chest does not like dust anymore. This uh, mask here also doubles up as a cool party hat. And this one here will filter out most of the dust that's in the air. And when you're working, obviously you are going to generate a fair bit of it. So be aware of this. Blowing the panels down is fine, but you will also need a panel wipe to get the last of the dust out before you paint. Masking up is an utter necessity. Make sure that you take your time doing this because once the U-pole is on, it is very difficult to remove. So, well, I'm having to make do with some uh, leaflets that's come through the door and tape them down because these days newspapers are getting harder and harder to find. Any bare metal should be etch primed. Now, U Pole do have an acid eight, but I'm using this etch primer and it's a very quick drawing. And basically, this is just priming the bare metal surfaces. You don't need to prime the paint that you've keyed down. Right, so anyway, this stuff here basically is a 2K or 2 pack, and you need to put a hardener with it to make it go off. So, you fill this up to the first ridge on the bottle okay now it is visible you have to check this you get that about right and then you put the top on and give it a damn good shake for about two minutes this is before you put your colorant or your tint in <laughs> OK, 
calculating 10% of the base coat, which is 750 milliliters, will be a 75 milliliters, not 100, because you're not adding to the hardener as well. Okay, so basically, again, once you've put your color in after the hardener, you then give it a damn good shake, make sure it's mixed well before you go ahead and spray. You can see I already had my mask on ready to go and the mix consistency is good. So basically it's screw it on to your U-pole gun and away we go. First thing I'd advise to do is have yourself a bit of um, metal or something that you can use as a test piece. You've got your airflow, okay, and now you can see what sort of texture you're going to get. If you're not happy with it, you then either have to change the applicator or the pressure, but that seems good enough for what we want. So we'll go ahead and start on our toolbox. So watch this, you'll see how quickly this can be applied to a surface. If you're doing a whole uh, Land Rover, for instance, a whole Defender, it will not take you um, very long at all to put one coat on. Basically, you have about an hour before the contents of the bottle become too hard to apply. Okay, so if you get your first coat on like this, then you have a flash time, which is up on the screen here, which will allow you to add a second coat. Right, so you can see how quickly this is applied. It's um, damn good stuff and it's very easy to spray on. Okay, so while I'm uh, applying this, I'll tell you that 2K or um, paints with isocyanates, in which this has, because it's got an activator with it, it, the isocyanates are not very good for your chest and they're not good for people around you. So you want to make sure you, that you're isolated and you have some sort of apparatus that will stop most or if not all of the vapors and none of the dust entering your lungs. It is a very dangerous stuff. If you start to feel that you're getting flu-like symptoms, then this could be the isocyanates that are affecting you. So um, read the safety sheet first, and there'll be a link below this video to tell you exactly what sort of chemicals are in this um, paintwork. Because if you are asthmatic, this will also aggravate you. So you would possibly think about be using something like an air-fed mask before you go ahead and start painting with this uh, with these sort of chemicals. But other than that, this is actually um, quite a, a good and uh, robust paint surface. So uh, we'll get back to you and tell you how we get on with this in the workshop.